Coming from that, the next question is uh, how do you raise your children to be unselfish? Uh, a lot of time what parents uh, do is uh, what they've been deprived of in their own childhood. They try to give as much as possible to the, their children. So if they are deprived of say a, a video game or they were deprived of certain things, they want to give their children that. And uh, But children are basically very simple. Uh, they are not complicated, we only make it them complicated. They are all very creative. Because I remember just giving you a small, uh, maybe a dough and a small plate and you'll be hours on and sitting and you'll be in your make-believe world and you'll be doing something uh, on your own. That is one aspect of it, basically giving them everything that you feel you were deprived of and uh, filling them with a lot of things. Then they tend to become like, you know, selfish. They want, they want, they want. And of course, uh, as I, we've already been talking about uh, being models. So how are you as a person? What kind of uh, values that you have are you willing to share out of your abundance? Whatever you have, are you willing to share with somebody who's uh, less fortunate? Uh, so that also they see it and uh, and then they emulate. Parenting is in a way enabling growth. Another component of growth is becoming Selfless. So self-interest, if it is at the exclusion of selflessness, becomes harmful. It's a capacity to actually accommodate the other for the completeness of growth. So how is that then enabled? That's the question. So generally any educative model definitely comprises modeling. Then there could be elements of teaching. Then there is stories. And then there are those moments. So the whole process of the human evolving from self-interest to also accommodate other interests is enabled by these tools, if I may say, for that growth to happen. So it's not about the minimum. It's not about survival alone. It is not about just pleasure. It is not about uh, entertainment. It's about the growth of the soul. That's the central part of a human. So in your own case, you would have had experience of all. Because if selflessness is stated as a word and encouraged as a virtue, without it being interpreted, then naturally there is a vagueness in the mind. It's almost like a foreign language. You don't understand. So what's the point of that? leaving a person in a state of helplessness with words which represent given virtues which are not really decoded. So the decoding takes place most effectively through the process of one of the more powerful ways is actually exemplifying modeling. So you would have seen many instances where the other centeredness is being depicted in our lives. I remember we used to take you to these uh, orphanage mukti mission, you have been part of it and you've uh, sat together with those children, taught them craft and whatever you used to learn, the school used to go and teach them. We have had uh, some sessions outside for people and uh, you were there. You were small but you were there giving out the feedback forms or whatever. And even Jethro was there though he couldn't uh, sit or participate but then he was always there. He was there uh, with us. So I think that I think helps in the child to know the other side, the other people and are able to then uh, feel that it's not they, me, myself, it's everyone. everyone. Yeah. Even for that matter, if I remember, I chose instead of really being only in the company of a homogeneous category of people, say for instance, people with the same economic status, so I chose deliberately a home. Where in the neighborhood, in the immediate house, there were people with other economic standards. Yeah. So that your world gets widened. And you begin to see them as part of you. Rather than actually grow in a home where you are only confined to similar category. Mm. And you consider the other of another situation as strange. So there's an education even by the choice. One of the things that we always encourage is reading. So when you read, 
things which actually also enlarge your heart rather than some you know mind teasing or a sense appealing types of stories alone but when you read things that actually enlarge your capacity for values so one of the things has been in our home you know the amount of investment that we have made in books and as things are changing into the modern world whether it be electronic or it be literature in in published form but you need to get content to enlarge your own capacities aiding to growth not just for happiness and then there are times where you are actually having a silent uh, moment somewhere unrelated it is nothing to do with service to society but then you may have a a uh, uh, conversation or an incident happens and you do a narration where you are bringing that meaning back again into the conversation and those are some moments that actually just throw up throw them so up into life and they are precious moments because the lessons that you learn and it could be even sometimes when you are traveling together when you are car there's nothing else to do and so an occasion can come for a conversation on a subject so i remember very very vividly there are times those are life changing moments where you are got the quietness to even think about something concentratedly and what really you bring to that matter that you hear at that moment could be life changing so the teaching the modeling the stories as well as the power of these moments all are so important so sometimes we are almost in a hurry to do many things as if life is dependent upon how much you do my days how much you be and become is so critical today's world obviously there so many things can catch our attention but what is that one thing that is most important we be an eye and an uncanny sense that parents should have and should have granted themselves those qualities even in the build up of their lives because it's not so easy to suddenly pick it just because you are a child you need to cultivate it over a period of time so you can't be reckless in the way in which your life is getting shared because there's a preparation for even becoming a good father or a good mother so it is a in a way a, a challenging and a, and a nice responsibility because you are making lives so that's an aspect of stewardship uh, which attaches to parenthood as much as any other responsibility yeah it's something i often think about that parenting is such a big responsibility because you are raising a child to become a part of society and not just any part of society but an important contributive kind compassionate individual and i think many people don't think about that sometimes the characteristics that you yourself need as a parent you have not developed by that time so then obviously maybe your child might pick up whatever characteristic you currently have so a lot of conversation even amongst my friends is what is it that we need to build in ourselves in order to be good parents in the future